Welcome to the Valiani Astra instructional video. Installing the machine. First we will show you how to unpack and install the machine. Remove the protective cardboard and foam strips. Then remove the plastic bag with the box of 50 spare blades. The English manual and the warranty card are placed underneath the ruler. Once you have placed the machine on the workbench, you have to install the right hand squaring arm. Slide the two pins of the squaring arm into the holes. Tighten the screw and slide the measuring scale all the way to the left. Then place the squaring support into its lock. The clamp of the machine can be fitted by using the special clamp lifter. Always place a slip sheet underneath the clamp. Place a piece of mat board under the clamp. Now make a cut just in front of the mat board. The blade has to enter a little into the slip sheet. Adjust the blade depth if necessary by unscrewing the black screw, changing the blade depth with the aluminium screw and tightening the black screw again. Repeat these steps until the blade cuts as deeply as shown into the slip sheet. Trimming the mat board. Now we will use the 90 degree cutting head to trim a mat board to the desired size. Therefore, we will remove the left hand stop and we will place the mat board onto the machine. Set the right hand stop to the desired format. The red arrow will show you on which side of the stop you have to read the scale. Slide the board against the bottom ruler and against the stop. Start cutting slightly by using the right hand side of the cutting head. This is the 90 degree cutting head. Turn the board Set the stop width of the desired board and make the second cut the same way. When you start a cutting mat, place the mat board upside down under the clamp. Set the left hand stop to the desired width of the border. Our first mat will have borders of 7cm overall. Once the stop is set, you have to slide the board carefully against the left hand stop and against the black pin. Now set the other stops also to 7cm, 2 and 5 sixteenths of an inch, and tighten their screws. Let the magnet holder on the top stop touch the edge of the mat board and tighten its screw. The cutting head has to touch the magnet holder. Then push the blade entirely into the board and start cutting all the way till you reach the bottom stop. Then turn the board 180 degrees and make the second cut. Turn the board another 90 degrees and adjust the magnet holder so it touches the edge of the board cut again. Finally turn the board again 180 degrees and make the final cut. Please note that you may push slightly with your left hand onto the arm of the machine while cutting. Changing the blade. Now we will show you how to change the blade. When tighten the black screw as shown and remove the blade holder. Remove the blade which is kept in place by a special magnet. Reinsert a new blade in exactly the same position and the magnet will hold it in place. Please check 
the direction of the blade as shown. Place the blade holder back into its slot and tighten the black screw. To change the blade of the 90 degree cutting head, you have to follow the same steps at the right hand side of the cutting head. A mat board with different borders. First use a pencil to mark the width of each border on the back of the mat. When you place the mat underneath the clamp, the number at the left hand side will show you the settings of the left hand stop. The number on the top of our mat shows the settings from the top stop and the one at the bottom shows the settings from the bottom stop. Now make the first cut. Turn the mat board 90 degrees and compare all three stops to the pencil numbers on the mat board. Adjust the stops if necessary. Continue this way until all four sides are cut. As you see, we do not use the screw of the magnet holder anymore. We push the cutting head against the magnet, pull both down until they touch the edge of the mat board. Then we push the blade into the board and pull the cutting head away from the magnet holder. This way you can work much faster than with the traditional methods. Cutting a double mat. The next step is cutting a double mat. Draw a pencil line on the back of the top mat. Then set the stops to cut the top mat as we did before. Again we use the power of the magnet to work quickly and precisely without using the screw on the magnet holder. Put some ATG tape on the back side of the board close to the opening and on some of the pieces that will fall out. Use the 90 degree cutting head to trim the bottom board a little. The size of the bottom mat must be slightly smaller than the size of the top mat. Then stick the top mat onto the bottom mat. Please check the pencil line to be able to place the fallout back in the exact same position. The edge of the bottom mat may not be visible. This is due to the success of cutting a double mat. Adjust the settings of the stops. Add for example 5mm 3 sixteenths of an inch to all stops. Now make the four cuts and be sure the magnet holder touches the edge of the first mat, the top mat. You do not have to change the blade depth.
cutting a V groove. Set the stops to the size of the V groove and start cutting the mat as you did before. After cutting two sides, place some tape on the cut. This way, the fallout will remain perfectly in place. Then continue cutting the remaining two sides. Again place some tape on the cuts. Turn the mat board and place it face up on the machine. Remove the top and the bottom stop. Start cutting slightly into the board so that the thin V-shaped line comes loose from the board. This time you may not push the blade entirely into the board. Be sure the board is placed well against the left hand stop. This is the clue to a perfect V-groove. Try to work slowly but precisely and don't forget to use the new blade to get a perfect result. After cutting the V-groove, turn the board upside down again. Change the settings of the stops and cut the opening. The result is a splendid V-groove which enhances the artwork. Cutting offset corners. Set the left hand stop to for example 9 cm, 3 and a quarter inches and set the top and bottom stop 6 cm two and three sixteenths of an inch. Make skip cuts only, which means you only have to cut the first part and the last part of each border. Now adjust the stops and put them to 6.5 centimeters, two and a quarter inches. Again, only make skip cuts.
Finally, put the left hand stop to 6 centimeters, 2 and 3 sixteenths of an inch, and put the top stop and the bottom stop to 9 centimeters, 3 and a quarter inches. As these are the last four cuts of the series, you may make full cuts. Of course, these offset corners can be made with different sizes and combinations. Cutting multiple window mats. Before you start cutting multiple window mats, you can draw the design on the back side of the mat board. To have a perfectly square drawing, you can use the left hand ruler and the clamp of the machine. For some cuts you can use the left hand ruler which makes it easier. Start cutting 2 mm one sixteenth of an inch before crossing the pencil line and stop cutting two millimeters one sixteenth of an inch behind the next crossing pencil line. Continue this way for all of the external cuts. When the four external cuts are made remove the left hand ruler Place the mat board under the clamp and be sure the pencil line is placed parallel and across to the clamp. Always check that the fallout is at the right hand side of the cut, otherwise you will have a reverse bevel. Make the last two cuts. You can use the same technique for other multiple window mats. Decorated bevels. Now we will show you the proper technique to prepare a mat for decorated bevels. Start by sticking some large removable tape on the mat board, close to the place where you will cut the bevel. Add some pressure on the tape. Turn the mat board upside down and cut the mat exactly the same way you did before. While cutting the tape you have to cut the tape too. This way the tape is protecting the surface while the bevel is free to be decorated with paint. Use acid free and light proof paint. Never brush the paint onto the bevel but use a sponge or some paper to dot the paint on the bevel.
When the paint is dry you can remove the tape. As you see the surface is free of paint while the bevel is perfectly well decorated. Adjusting the left hand stop. If necessary you can adjust the measuring scale of the left hand stop. Set the stop to for example 7 centimeters, 2 and 5 sixteenths of an inch and make a cut. Check the width of the border. In this case, the width is not 7 cm. You have to adjust the measuring scale. Suppose you measure 7.2 cm. You have to slide the measuring scale of the left hand stop without moving the stop to 7.2 cm. Correcting overcuts. When you have an overcut in all four angles, you have to start by turning the mat board upside down. When the overcut in on the top, it means the top stop needs adjustment. Slide the measuring scale of the top stop. When you release the measuring scale, the spring underneath will hold the scale in place. You can also have an overcut in the other sense. This means the bottom stop needs adjustment. Don't forget to turn the mount board upside down to check whether the top stop or the bottom stop needs adjustment. You can solve the overcut problem with the bottom stop exactly the same way you did with the top stop. As the bottom measuring scale may be hard to move, you can use a screwdriver to do so. Correction curved angles. When you have the curved angles as shown on the video, it normally means the blade is extended too far. Unscrew the black screw and decrease the blade depth by screwing the silver screw. Tighten the black screw again to hold the blade holder in place. Make another test and repeat this process if necessary. Cleaning the machine. When you clean the machine, avoid grease, oil and silicone spray. The best product you can use is lighter fluid and a soft cloth or some paper tissue. Put some lighter fluid on the paper and clean the rail of the machine. To clean the ball bearings, take two pieces of tape and stick the adhesive sides together. Slide the cutting head towards the top and place the two tapes on the flat part of the rail. The sticky part of the tape must be on the bottom. When you slide the cutting head over the sticky bottom part of the tape, the dirt and dust of the ball bearings will stick onto the tape. Repeat this on the other side of the rail too. Cleaning the machine at least once a week will keep it in good shape and will guarantee you have a perfect result.